Well, it happened. The EV tax credit bill that we've been talking about here for well over a year finally went through. Now, is it the one that we were talking about that long ago? Far from it. And in fact, this one is just not great. There's a lot of things that are a bummer and the good parts about it actually don't take effect for longer than a year from now. So we're going to dive into all of that and why I'm just not thrilled. And you definitely want to stick around till the end of the video where I have the craziest news about that point of sale aspect of this tax credit and why that might not be happening anytime soon. So stick around for that. Let's get back to the video. So speaking of that manufacturer's cap, if you don't recall the old EV tax credit, of course, if the manufacturer sell, sold more than 200,000 vehicles, they were no longer eligible for people to claim the EV tax credit on their vehicles. So that was a big push for this current tax credit that just went through is, well, the people making all the EVs, well, why can't we get a tax credit on them? And I think that was a lot of the incentive of why this went through, because a main part of it is they're going to reduce that cap, making companies like GM and Tesla eligible eligible again, which on paper seems great. And, you know, it kind of is. That's probably the best part about this is, you know, companies like Tesla who have semi-affordable EVs, um, you know, especially GM who has actually affordable EVs can get them into people's driveways, you know, of the average Joe's home. And like at that three or 30,000 to 40,000 uh, uh, ballpark price, that $7,500 tax credit means a lot and can really help, you know, the average family afford an electric car. And that's overall what I think the purpose of the uh, tax credit should be. It's to make people who are on the fence of if they want to go uh, electric or not, this is the incentive to push them towards it. So it doesn't help so much on the very high end models who of people who are going to buy them anyways. Ford Lightning, for instance. If they're the same price as the ICE F-150 and there's a tax incentive on the electric one and we can convince people who are going to get a vehicle that is just very gas reliant to switch to electric, that's where it does well. So um, I don't know if this new credit really helps with that, but we'll get into all of that right now. So all of that to say... This new uh, phase out won't actually take place until January 1st of next year. So anyone buying a Tesla or a GM uh, up until the end of the year, this tax credit just does not matter. It, it won't count until the 1st of January. That's when that cap's deleted. So as quickly as I can, I'm going to try, uh, and this is crazy, I can literally name every EV that's going to be eligible because so many were axed from eligibility. Whether, whether it being priced too high, whether it being the battery components not being made in the U.S. or the car itself not being made in the U.S. Those were a lot of the stipulations causing like a lot of EVs to not be on this list to be eligible anymore. So let me read through the ones that still will get the tax credit. Uh, I'd like to thank Electric for making a great article on this where I will be referencing this um, great list that they put together. So uh, the Audi Q5, but the plug-in hybrid uh, model only. The BMW Series 3 plug-in the BMW X5, both of the Chevrolet Bolts starting next year, of course, Chrysler Pacifica plug-in, the Ford Escape plug-in, the Ford Lightning is eligible. That should be a, a good news, uh, but I think we already knew that because Ford was keen enough to raise their price by 7500 uh, making it an even draw. So we might as well just consider it like it's basically, yeah, it's a draw. Uh, the Mach-E, the Transit, they all are. They both are eligible. The Hummer pickup it set, is listed on here, but I think the price is too high and actually will not be eligible. So I might be missing something of why that's on the list. Uh, Jeep, the all the 4xe, the plug-in hybrids from Jeep, the Cherokee and the Wrangler will be eligible. Uh, the plug-in Lincolns will be uh, eligible as well. Uh, the Nissan Leaf is on this list. The Lucid Air is on this list. Rivian models, Tesla models, the Volvo S60, BMW 3 Series plug-in, the Mercedes EQS, and that's where the list ends. 
Now, this list will grow if manufacturers start sourcing materials in the U.S. or building in the U.S. to make their cars eligible. And, you know, maybe that's a good thing of this EV tax credit. It may draw a lot of manufacturers to start building in the U.S. to try to make their vehicles eligible for the tax incentive. And back to the eligibility status. So uh, it is a cap of $80,000 on trucks and SUVs and a $55,000 cap on cars. So that will cut, as I mentioned, the GMC Hummer from this list almost definitely. And then the twist on that too is if you make more than $150,000 a year, you won't be eligible. Or if you file file jointly, if you make over $300,000 a year, you will also not be eligible for the tax credit. And now, hopefully you're still watching because here's the craziest part. You remember the one redeeming part of this new tax credit, the fact that it was going to be a point of sale credit? Well, get this. It's not going to be kicking in until 2024, according to this article here that has dove into the language in the bill. Uh, so when we've, we've been talking a lot about the lightning, for instance, if you are going to order before 2024, it will work just like the old tax credit. That's important to note because we've been reporting a lot about the fact that it is, uh, actually going to be a point of sale credit, meaning you go to check out at your dealer, you're sitting with the finance manager, and they would reduce 7500 off the price of the vehicle then and there. And it will be that way, but not until buying of EV in 2024. That's what that means. So uh, you will have to still uh, file your taxes and work it into your end of the year taxes until then. So all in all, I'm really struggling to find the positive light on this. Uh, I've mentioned on a live stream a couple weeks ago that, you know, we knew a lot of this then, not all of this, but I said this makes way for a better system in the future, but it's really going to hurt us for the next three years for EV adoption. It's already happening nat happening naturally, like the purchases of EVs is just going through the roof regardless of a tax credit. So we'll see a, a consistent adoption of EVs, but I think this tax credit... I'm I'm failing to see the incentivization behind it really. There's a couple cool things of the manufacturer's cap being listed as I mentioned or lifted as I mentioned earlier. But other than that, it just seems like it's vanilla to me. There's it's neutral, you know, it's like maybe even not worth it. But it could be worse. We could have got a raise of prices on vehicles like the Lightning and not gotten a tax credit and nothing go through and Ford hits their cap and we're, we're stuck just paying more. So, you know, it could always be worse. And uh, I'm trying to stay on the brighter sides of things, but it's just not ideal if you ask me. So I hope that there's, you know, maybe amendments to this in the future or, you know, something. But this looks like what we're going to be using for the next couple of years. So I guess get used to it, right? Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. And I, as always, I really appreciate everyone who's watching. And thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.